All right, now we are live. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this is our first our first live stream of the school year internship. I'm June Bea from Bea Group, and I'm so excited to have you all join us. So we are live on our YouTube channel at Bea Group. So again, this is the first one. It is going to be focused on, we're going to start with the high altitude balloon group. Correct, Brian? And so I wanted to uh, tell you a little bit about this program. It is something that was made possible with funding from grants focused on career technical education. We have, uh, we're so fortunate at Bay Group to be partnering with Downey Unified School District. We are fortunate also to be working with Blue Dot Education. So we have two, uh, we have two leads here. One is going to be talking about high altitude um, balloons and the other is going to be in, on environmental uh, justice. And so we're going to start with the high altitude balloon and I'm going to turn it over to Brian Delgado from Blue Dot Education. Hi, Brian. Hey, thanks, June. Uh, I'm Brian Delgado. I am a co-founder of Blue Dot Education. And actually, uh, these internships worked hand in hand. Um, we had a couple of interns working on getting uh, balloon payloads up to 100,000 feet and collecting data. It's a project we've been developing for some time. Um, and then my colleague and partner, Andrew Lorario, had interns working on uh, mechanisms for collecting data. So um, Arduinos and data loggers, and, and we'll get to those projects in a bit. Um, I wanna just bring in uh, Carla Benedict. She's gonna be our first presenter. Um, real quick before, I just wanna name that uh, really appreciate the work the interns did because they materially have helped us in developing this project to the point where it's going to be happening out in uh, out in Calexico. And I don't think this we would maybe have been ready uh, to the point we are with without the work that they put in. So I really appreciate the work that Eli, Carla, Vanessa put in, and uh, now bring in Carla to to share what uh, her internship. Hi, I'm Carlo Benedict. I'm a senior at Warren, and this is my second year doing this internship. Next slide. So next slide. My task was to create a high altitude balloon and come up with an experiment that I would like to try. So throughout the first weeks, I researched and designed and created spreadsheets of materials that I would later need to build my payload. So after much thought I, um, and research, I decided my experiment would be how seeds grow differently when exposed to that environment. Um, I chose that um, because it would be a quick experiment and due to materials and time, um, it would just be the easiest to do. Next slide. Next slide. So the creative process, so starting off, I researched different designs and originally I wanted to, um, my payload to be a styrofoam box but because of federal law, um, my payload needed to be under four pounds. So we decided to use a lunch box and then I got to work. So I originally, um, I put everything together with zip ties and duct tape and it actually held pretty good. Next slide. So preparing for launch day, next slide. So preparing for launch day, we decided to release the balloon from San Diego just because it would be easier. Um, if we were to launch from LA, it had a possibility of landing in the city on the street, and it was just easier to um, release from San Diego. So in order to decide the day, we, um, we used a website called HabHub to predict where the balloon was gonna land. So the change, the date changed multiple times due to changes in weather, but we set on March 2nd. Next slide, launch day. Next slide. So on launch day, Andrew, uh, Brian, and Drew, June, drove to a spot early in the morning and they released the balloon and there's the video.
Next slide. Retrieving the balloon. So once the balloon popped, Brian and Andrew followed um, the GPS unit that we had attached to the payload. And it happened to land in someone's front yard, which isn't ideal, but it's better than a road. So from what I was told, I wasn't able to be there because it obviously wasn't from San Diego. Um, what I was told, it looked like the payload had been touched, but it was okay. So that's good. Next slide or video. results. So we had a camera on the payload. So this is one of the pictures we were able to get from the balloon. Um, you can see the ocean, the mountains. So it's pretty cool. Next slide. Learning and growth. So originally when I started this internship, I wasn't sure if I would like it because I'd never done anything like this. And throughout the weeks, I really started to enjoy it. And Brian always made sure all of our questions were answered and that we fully understand what we were doing. Um, when building my payload, I did have some self-doubt and trouble. Um, and I did get frustrated at times, but I learned that it just took patience and dedication. So I would take a break, come back, and I got what I need to get done. So, um, I just learned that I needed to be patient and I learned some dedication and I'm grateful that I got to do this internship because I feel a lot more confident going out to the world and doing things I normally wouldn't do. So I had a lot of fun. It was super fun to launch also. Thank you. <laughs> And actually, I'd like to introduce John Harris, who's here from the school district. John, I was earlier thinking down Unified and I wanted to just welcome you to being here. And before we switch to the next speaker, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, well, John. We're so proud of these, uh, of, of these events where uh, students are able to demonstrate their, uh, their learning. Um, from a project-based standpoint. Uh, and so um, always very, very impressed with uh, what the students are able to, uh, to answer in terms of questions they had at the beginning and then um, the presentation that they have at the end in terms of their, their, uh, their learning journey through uh, these internship programs. So uh, congratulations, Carla. That's a that's just an amazing picture and uh, probably a wealth of information that you gathered in, um, in doing th this project in so many different areas. So uh, great job. Really, really impressed with, uh, with your project. Thanks, John. And I just wanted to also bring up that our interns worked virtually. They worked remotely. So Brian, Andrew, and I are based in San Diego, and the interns are in, in Los Angeles. And so because of the, the restrictions with COVID, it was difficult to be in person. And so we did the best we could. So Brian, yeah, it was amazing to be able to, to do that. And then do you have the next speaker? Yeah, I do. But real quick, June, before we move on, I just had one question for Carla. And Carla, I'm just wondering where you stood with the uh, experiment. I know that we had some seeds that went up. You have them now. Um, we, if you could just speak to that really quickly. Uh, yes, so I do have them planted. They're in the other room, actually. Uh, I have them separated, so I'm just waiting to see how they grow, what differences come up. I'm very curious to see how that goes. And when exactly, how many days have they been in the soil? Uh, for about three or four. 
but we should know something in another week. Great. Um, our next presenter is Eli Ruiz. So I want to bring in Eli and invite him in. Thank you. Um, let me just share my screen real quick. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Eli and this is my high altitude balloon internship presentation. In this internship, I was challenged with designing, building and launching a high altitude balloon that would reach the top of the Earth's atmosphere. My hope at the start of this internship was to learn more about the creative process, technology and mechanism building that goes behind constructing a high altitude balloon. And as I'm about to show you, my hopes were met. For me, the learning process of this internship was one of the most fun parts. Our lead, Brian Delgado, gave us great lectures on the science and math that goes behind high altitude balloons. And even though it was on Zoom, it felt very much like a classroom environment. I learned not only the parts, and pieces of a high altitude balloon, but also all the physics and math that goes behind it. And I got to learn stuff I didn't know before, such as how helium is the second lightest element in the periodic table. As someone who loves anything science and math related, it was fun for me to make note or take notes and understand the complexity of sending a balloon to the top of the atmosphere. And I would like to thank Work Wonder for the little notebook they provided me with, uh, which is where I took all these notes and more. Now the time came uh, to design the balloon and Brian turned the power all over to me and told me I could design it however I want. So I did research on the different types of balloons and eventually I decided on an open chassis design, which is kind of what you see on the right of the screen. The only way we could create that though was with the 3D printer. And for that, dimensions were needed. Dimensions are basically the, all the lengths, um, widths and uh, angles of an object. So Brian tasked me with scaling the frame and doing all the engineering um math to have it laser cut and honestly i loved it you can see that on the left as someone who wants to pursue engineering in college this was a great taste of the work i would be doing in the future the picture on the left is just some of the math and the picture on the right is the final sketch i made so i sent that to brian and he went off to have it laser cut Around that time though, Brian also sent me a literal drone in the mail for the purpose of learning how to fly one and take pictures and videos on one. This was so exciting for me since I've never flown one before and it was a new experience. It didn't take long for me to learn how to connect it to my phone. And as you can see on, as you can see on the right and also how to fly it. So as many of you can tell, this is the Columbia Memorial Space Center in Downey. And this is where I had my fun putting the drone into use. I've never been able to take pictures like these before. And this is just me dipping my toes into this technology. I will most likely buy myself a drone after I give the one Brian let me borrow back to him. This is some Arduino technology that Brian also sent me in the mail. And we hopped on a Zoom meeting with Andrew to Put it together. We unfortunately struggled with this and it turned out to be something that was hard to build over a Zoom call, but I'm glad we tried it. In any type of work, there's always going to be roadblocks in the way. And since we're doing work ourselves, it was only natural that we face them. But I'm glad we tried it because I'd rather try and fail than try something just because, or not try it just because we're on Zoom. Well, on a lighter note, Brian and Andrew were able to have my open chassis design laser cut. And they used a laser cutter, as you can see on the left. And it turned out to be perfect. It's so cool for me to see something that I made, something that I did the math for, something that I drew on a piece of paper, like come to life. 
uh, I never thought this would even be possible on an online internship. So that's super cool. We weren't able to launch my balloon yet because of weather problems and problems with the wind and locations and stuff. But that's okay because I did receive a lot of stuff from this internship, even without the money. Um, we weren't, we will, we still plan to launch my balloon in the future, just with the right timing and the right um, environment. So as um, my partner or fellow intern shared, this is a picture that was taken on the balloon that we did launch. And it's just like, so crazy and I, I'm thankful and proud that I was able to be in the same team of that, that launched this balloon and took this photo because this is just it's awesome that we did this in an online internship for me and how this will benefit me in the future um, we did create our own blogs, the intern leads had us create our own blogs and our own websites with this internship. And I did create my own website. I did share all the stuff I did, all, all of the things I shared with you guys, I shared on that website. And I did put that website link onto my resume. So it will help me get jobs in the future. It will help me for opportunities in the future. And also the, the math I showed you guys earlier, the building, all that was experience for me, for me to pursue engineering in college. And I'm so glad that I was able to do all that. And yeah. Thank you so much, Eli. That was fantastic. I don't know if there are any questions or if we're gonna just move on. How should we do this? Are there questions? Or do you wanna wait till after Andrew's group? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can, we can. I'll, it's up to you. Andrew, do you wanna go ahead and introduce? Yeah, I'll introduce because, a little bit. Yeah, um, because or we, we, can, or we can do something. Mostly. Oh, I was just going to say, because they're so closely aligned, maybe we'll just do the third presentation and then. Okay, I'll just I'll just say a few things quickly. Um, my internship was separate, but but connected at the same time. Obviously, Brian and I work very closely together. Uh, you know, I'm also a co-founder of Blue Dot Education with him. Uh, we were longtime teachers, and now we're trying to just bring these projects and some of this work out into the world. Uh, to engage learners in multiple platforms, including virtual spaces. Um, so it's exciting to be able to do some of this work uh, and have interns that are really engaged and really capable young adults that are doing this. Um, I was an environmental chemist before I was an educator. And so I always like the idea of partnering a little bit about that with some of the platforms for exploration, like a high altitude balloon. So when we had the chance to collaborate, um, well, one of the things that I was doing in my internship solely focused around developing these Arduino-based data collectors. And as June mentioned, this is all with the attempt to develop uh, environmental justice projects. Um, we're working with Calexico, as Brian mentioned, and they're launching weather balloons, but they're also monitoring the air quality uh, because the salt and sea is drying up and the dust particles get up into the air and it's, a, it's becoming a health um, issue in that area. It already is a health issue in that area, but um, being able to empower learning around that and to uh, create these data collectors uh, has been a focus for our organization and the work that everyone has done has been uh, has been really cool. So it's not just developing something for the high altitude balloon, which Eli shared a little bit about, um, but it's also, you know, being able to just to engage with that type of work. Um, and Vanessa and uh, another intern who unfortunately couldn't be with us here um, did some really incredible things. I'm excited to hear from them. So Vanessa, I'll bring up your slides if you're if you're ready.
Okay, so um, hi, my name is Vanessa Galindo, and I'm here to talk about um, my env environmental science internship. Next slide. Okay, so some information on who I am. Um, I'm a senior at Downey, and currently I'm looking to go to um, UC Santa Cruz, UC Davis, or Cal Poly Pomona. I just like learning everything about like marine biology, like agriculture and just anything environmental science. And hopefully I can have a career in like helping to preserve wildlife and just overall sustainability. And I feel like through this internship, I really learned a lot of important skills and I gained a lot of work experience and just like a better understanding of who I want to be in the future. Next slide. So the objective of this internship was to build environmental sensors using um, Arduino technology. So what environmental sensors are is that um, they're measuring like environmental factors. Oh, sorry if you hear my dog in the background, by the way. And next slide. Okay, so my personal project was an aquaponic system. So what an aquaponic system basically is, it's a simulated ecosystem that is used to grow um, like aquatic animals, mostly like fish and crops. And what inspired me to do this is that I just, I like food <laughs> and I like, um, I like raising fish. And another thing that inspired me too is just my culture and my family. Um, I'm Mexican and we go to Mexico often. And in Mexico, they have these things called the chinampas, which is a system where they could grow um, lots of food sustainably. And there's studies that also show that they were pretty um, helpful to the ecosystems too. And I also wanted to work on this project because um, I just think urban um, agriculture and affordable healthy food should be like a basic right for everyone, especially like marginalized communities. And some more details on like what an aquaponic system does. It basically takes the ammonia that's that's like produced from um, fish waste and it converts it into nitrates and then nitrite. Wait, no, wait, no, my bad. <laughs> nitrites and then nitrates. <laughs> and uh, it's basically plant fertilizers and clean water for the fish. Next slide. Um, so more about my project, um, I decided to make pH and temperature temperature sensors because um, for the temperature, fish need a certain temperature to stay alive. And the bacteria used to convert all those chemicals into like clean water also needs a warmer temperature. So I can monitor like what the temperature was with my sensor and then as well as the pH plants and fish need a certain pH to stay alive as well. So that's why I decided on those two. Oh yeah, and there's a lot more information on my website. So like, I really encourage you to go because it's really hard to explain in just 10 minutes. I just put it in the chat right now. Um, but yeah, so I would look at various designs online and there is a, a lot of limited information so I just combined two ideas I saw and made my own. I honestly made a lot of mistakes along the way, but um, I had a lot of help from my dad and also my engineering teacher, Mr. Jamka. He's the go, honestly, and I was able to make it work. I also collaborated with the aquarium I internet to get some live tilapia. Next slide. I uh, see these are some of the pictures of what I did. Um, these, okay, so this picture in the middle is what I have. So these two buckets are basically filters. The first one on the left is um, like a solids filter and it filters out all the, the solid material. And then the, the second white bucket is the biofilter, which uh, houses most of the bacteria that converts all the chemicals. And then this bin at the bottom is where I plan to grow all the, all the stuff or all the plants. 
And then I don't, it's not pictured here, but I'm going to have the, the fish at the bottom and it's all going to have a pump that goes in a loop. Next slide. Okay, so I honestly learned a lot in this internship. I felt like I learned a lot of practical skills, which includes like using a drill, cutting wood, and just overall design thinking. I also had like a refresher in chemistry, of course, with converting the ammonia and all that other stuff and making sure that the I cycled the water right. And I also learned money management because I was giving um, $100 to buy most of the materials. So I really had to ch like choose everything wisely and make sh made sure like not to make any mistakes. Um, I also learned a lot of Arduino programming. Like I, before this internship, I didn't even know what an Arduino was. And now I I made two sensors on my own. And I think that's pretty amazing. I also learned how to pay more attention to detail because like at first I was just trying to get everything done. And that's what made like that's what led me to a lot of my mistakes. But I felt like I'm doing better on that now. And I also learned that um, maybe I should change career paths because um, I initially applied as an agriculture major to um, all of the colleges. And this project was a combination of my passion for agriculture and like biology. And through this project, I really learned that my passion for biology and like animal husbandry was bigger than my passion for agriculture. And I also like with this project that um, I was given more independence and time to research and design my own thing. So that's why I also chose Santa Cruz because there was more opportunities for research and it just felt like it was my thing. Next slide. All right, so thank you for listening to my presentation and I can answer some questions if you have any. Vanessa, that was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm not, I just wanted to say that. I don't have any, any more questions. Thank you. Vanessa, I, I, I had one question for you, which is just around the idea that you were working with Andrew on the project, but you also, it sounds like, went back and found teachers in the school. One, you know, one teacher you called the goat, which I love, um, that were that, that, that could support you. And I just wanted, like, that idea of internship back to school, back to internship, you know, to project. Like, can you say more about that experience and how that, like, may have helped learning in the school? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I forgot to mention this in the presentation, but I'm actually building it at the school. And since we have a fish pond, like in the engineering building, I'm going to build it right next to the fish pond. And I contacted um, two of my teachers, um, my engineering teacher and my botany teacher. Um, I'm sorry, I, I think I cut out for a second. Oh yeah, so um, like I was saying though, um, my engineering teacher was a lot of help. He actually provided like a lot of uh, the materials, like he gave me um, like a file to file down all the holes I made for the buckets. And he was just really like helpful and passionate. He would give me helpful tips on how to design everything, how to connect everything. He was the one who helped me with the PVC because I was, I was so lost. I didn't know what I was doing. So yeah, it was a good experience. Are there other questions for any of the interns? I have a question for all of them. So if the internship was a week or two longer, what else would you do?
Um, I can answer that. Um, my project was a kind of was kind of big, and honestly, I felt like I I bit more than I could chew. So if I had more time, I felt like I could have designed like um, my stuff better because there were a lot of design flaws and like I, I put all my mistakes on my website so you can look at that. But I just felt like if I had more time, I could have designed it to be um, easier and just more affordable probably too. I have a question for all of you. Um, the, the the work that we did wasn't prescriptive at all. It wasn't like, hey, we're going to do this stuff. There's, you know, this routine that we have in this field where we're going through the motions and doing the work and you guys get a sense of that. It was very open ended and it required you guys to kind of take like a, a leadership role in developing projects. And, um, you know, we've heard from all of you where like, you know, we, we ran into these points where we just didn't have the answers and we had to figure it out. What was it like working in that kind of environment for all of you? I can answer. Um, personally, it was stressful at times because, I mean, we needed answers and we just didn't have them. Or for example, the Arduino board, when we were building it with Andrew, I ran out of some materials that I needed to create it. So we kind of just had a stop because there was nothing we could do. Um, and just think of other ways we can connect the wires or stuff. So um, I think it was stressful, but it was also cool to think about how we could fix our problem in different ways. How about for you, Eli? Um, I liked I liked the fact that it was not like routine based or like all scripted, all that we were gonna do. I, it was very free. I liked that freedom that we I was given because I had the freedom to design the way I wanted to design design it, the way I wanted it to look, the way I wanted it to build it. Like it was just so free. And there's so like kind of unlike school. And I, I like that about it. Eli, I have one follow up question for you, which is we are going to use your design and we are going to, to launch it. Um, are you open to staying connected to for when that happens? Just to, you know, even if it's just live streaming that launch or however, you know, that can happen, are you open to, to, to continuing to? To stay connected with us until that goes up yeah uh i definitely want to see it through because like it's, i kind of feel connected to it already i kind of designed it a little bit so yeah for sure for sure no you definitely designed it it was 100 your design which is cool yeah vanessa do you have anything to add to the previous question um yeah honestly it was stressful um because i felt kind of alone and i didn't know what i was doing but at the same time like when i would run into a problem and then like get it fixed or like solve it it, it felt like so amazing i felt so relieved and i felt like i was actually making progress and looking back on it now i felt like i made a lot of progress even if i was by myself and i I really like the independence I was given because it helped me just, um, it was, I don't know how to say it, but it feels like it's my own, like, as opposed to working in a group where like, um, you know, opinions like contradict or um, sometimes your ideas don't get through. So that's why I like being independent because like it's completely my own. I can add that, you know, the, the work that we did with the Arduino for the weather balloon was a 1.0 attempt. Um, and even though like it didn't work out as well online, we figured out so much 
and uh, I I did share it with you know through an email, but I just wanted to kind of give you guys like a a, a quick for those of you that were part of this during the um when we got online and we did this together, we were going through this build right here and we were using different parts and, you know, we didn't have all the things that we needed, but it, that led to us being able to completely make a whole new wiring guide. And this is the new kind of build that came out of that. So even though that attempt seemed like it was, you know, struggling to get through and it was, you know, those are some of the things as part of this process of doing this work where sometimes you just got to dive in and see, you know, where you hit those roadblocks and how you move forward. And, you guys were a big part of that process. So I'm excited because it's really going to help us, you know, as we continue doing these programs. Yeah. When I said at the beginning that we were on the front end and you got, and what you guys did really impacted our work. That's exactly what I was talking about was the, the work you were doing. Um, we didn't always have the answer to, which is like, a, that, that, that's, that's as honest as it can be. That's real work for us. And we needed to get the answers. And I feel like uh, I remember the night because I couldn't be there due to like, you know, some COVID stuff happening. And Andrew took the lead on on uh, on working with you all for like three or four straight hours. But he called, even though it was frustrating, he called me that night and was super happy. He was like, we figured it out. <laughs> He's like, at the end, I just had one intern left, but we figured it out. So I appreciate you guys hanging with it. I have another question. So all of you went through so much in the various aspects of what you worked on. What was your favorite part throughout the internship that you did? Um, I can answer that. Um, I think that my favorite part was uh, collaborating with um, everyone that I did. Um, like I mentioned, I collaborated with the aquarium, my internet, and it was actually really exciting because I was really nervous for like asking them for anything because it's like a reputable um, location and I don't know what was going to happen if I asked for some fish. Um, and they were just really encouraging and really excited to know what I was doing and it felt really amazing. The same with my um, working with my teacher and my dad. It just really helped me com connect to um, my school. And just, I feel like um, I'm a better student because of it now. And I just think it was really fun because everyone was so excited and so helpful. And it was cool. My favorite part, uh, I would have to say, was the like the, the lectures and the lessons that, that Brian was giving about all the like science and math behind it. Because like, honestly, I do enjoy that. I do enjoy that, that higher level of, um, I guess, engineering, because you know, that's, that's my passion. And uh, it was still awesome. Even though it was on Zoom, it was awesome. I took notes, I, I learned. And that's all I ever wanted to do in this internship. So, yeah. For me, my favorite part was seeing my balloon go up. Um, I had worked on it for so long. And just from the start, putting the, my materials list together, I worked on it. And um, it was so cool watching it go up. I didn't get to watch the live stream because I was in school, but I did see the video. And it was so cool just I built that and now it's going to space. Like it was crazy. That's what'd fantastic. I'm oh, sorry. What'd you think when you saw the photos, Carla? I thought it was really cool. I couldn't believe that like, whoa, I built that. Like, that's crazy. I never thought I could do anything like that. And they're so, those are really cool pictures. Those are beautiful. I know. I'm sad that you weren't there. I mean, I, I got the benefit of being able to go on the launch and I have to say it was amazing. And I do hope at some point, I mean, we're all going to see each other in the near future. So 
So I'm excited for that to happen. And, and I, I'm really excited that I was able to, to be the person that, you know, let go when, when it went up. (laughs) Thank you for doing the honors. (laughs) Yeah, it was amazing. It was so fun. So are there other questions? So if there aren't any, I'm actually going to plug that we have another showcase today. So we have one at 545 tonight. It is with our our colleagues uh, doing business and entrepreneurship. So with this school year internship, we had seven different groups. And so this is this actually represents two groups tonight, this showcase. And then the next one is is led by Adam uh, Borek, and he is going to be Uh, Yeah, we're going to be back in about half an hour. And so if you could join us again for this, uh, this is the Downey Unified School Year Internship. And and so, yeah, we will be back in a little bit. So please join us on YouTube slash Bay Group. And I wanted to thank all of you, all of the interns, all of the leads, Brian and Andrew. It was, this was a first time for us to do a school year intern internship. Um, the All of the interns are actually alumni from our summer program. So we've been having the summer program for a little while now. And so this is the first time we've actually made it. A, it's 12 weeks. The summer one was much shorter. It was about uh, four weeks with the deep dive. And so this one was 12 weeks. And so they stuck with it. And now uh, we are doing the showcases of what they gained from the experience. So this is our first one. And we're so excited to have you come back. We'll have more with the schedule. But yes, 